Ukrainian military political analyst with the Information Resistance Group, Alexander Kovalenko, believes that Putin will never agree to Donald Trump's plan to freeze the conflict along the current front line. Let's look at the situation from the Russian perspective and their violated constitution, which claims Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and Luhansk regions as part of the Russian Federation. The question arises, can the Russians fully capture Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk, and, of course, Luhansk, where they are still struggling in Bilohorivka in time for Trump's inauguration? I don't think so, said Kovalenko on Espresso TV. According to military political analyst, Putin will never agree to Donald Trump's plan to freeze the conflict along the current front line. Putin will face questions. What have we agreed to if part of our so-called territories is under Ukrainian control? Therefore, Donald Trump will have to fulfill his promise to supply Ukraine with more weapons than the Biden administration did, Kovalenko emphasized. It may become more destructive U.S. weapons. Donald Trump's rise to power in the United States has become a chance to quickly end the Russian war against Ukraine. The future peace agreement will probably not provide for the restoration of the country's territorial integrity. However, Kiev will definitely avoid capitulation. Political journalist Jamie Detmer writes about this in his opinion piece. He claims that not only in the West, but also in Kiev, there is a secret relief that Trump, once in power, could quickly put an end to the Russian aggression. Ukraine, the author notes, will have to sacrifice not only part of its territory, but also its plans to join NATO. Without these points, Moscow will probably not agree to end the war. Some call it a lousy deal, and it is. In fact, it will undermine confidence in the West. And it is a crying shame that we are where we are. But if you spend decades cutting your armies and your defense industry and you don't draw mandatory red lines, that is exactly what happens. Detmer writes, he warned that Putin's impunity in this story would inspire all the world's autocrats, showing them that they can do whatever they want, that they can undermine the foundations of the world order. The world will definitely not become safer, but there is no other alternative, unless it is a perpetual war in which the Western powers either become warring parties themselves, or at least put their economies on a war footing to supply Ukraine with much greater volumes than they do now. That is the harsh reality, the article says. Conservative lawmakers in the Polish parliament exulted at Donald Trump's victory, standing and applauding while they chanted his name. The prospect of a second Trump term has excited people on the populist right across Central Europe who share his anti-immigrant views and contempt for international organizations. But many others in a region near the war in Ukraine are afraid. They worry Trump could abandon Ukraine and force Kyiv into a deal that ends up emboldening Russia further or unwind the U.S. military presence in Europe. The change in Washington means Europe will have to invest more in its security and defense rather than relying on the American protective shield as it has done for decades, argues Michael Baranowski, managing director of Warsaw-based GMF East, part of the German Marshall Fund think tank. We Europeans Poles and French and Brits and preferably Germany as well need to step up, Baranowski said. Only by stepping up do we have a chance to keep the worst-case scenarios from happening. Both a bad deal in Ukraine and perhaps a lowering of U.S. engagement in Europe. Poland, the Baltic states and other nations across Central and Eastern Europe were under Moscow's control during the Cold War. When that era ended in 1989, it freed them to turn to the West. They never want to return to being satellites of Moscow. NATO members now, they worry that Trump in his second term could end a decades-long commitment to securing the peace in Europe. Just this week, a missile defense base in northern Poland was inaugurated, the fruit of years of planning by Republican and Democratic administrations. Polish officials expressed hopes that it was a sign that a bipartisan U.S. commitment to the region would endure. The whole world will see clearly that this is not Russia's sphere of interest anymore, Polish President Andrzej Duda declared. Trump has a long history of denigrating NATO, and former administration officials say he repeatedly threatened to withdraw the U.S. from the alliance. His allies have described that as bluster or tough negotiating tactics that have pushed other European allies to take more responsibility, and argue that Trump didn't abandon NATO. The change in Washington has in just a few days changed the dynamic of Poland's presidential campaign before an election next spring. 
Foreign Minister Radek Sikorsky, a former defense minister with ties in Washington, entered the running to be the candidate for centrist Prime Minister Donald Tusk's party, challenging the longtime favorite, Warsaw Mayor Rafał Trzaskowski. Sikorsky argues that his experience makes him the better choice for the times. His opponents argue that the anti-Trump views of his wife, the American writer and Applebaum, could create complications with Trump's upcoming administration. The region is now holding its collective breath to see what a second Trump presidency will bring.